Hello, everyone, and welcome to this new episode of my podcast, Christine Means Business. And as you can see, if you're tuning in on YouTube, I'm not on my own today, but I have a really wealth of wisdom fountain lady here with me, someone I admire tremendously and who I'm actually currently working with, and that is the one and only Gemma Went. So let me first hit you with the official bio before I keep, you know, swooning over her. So Gemma is an award-winning online business mentor and growth strategist, and she is helping small businesses grow and scale with consistent recurring revenue. And I do love this because there's one word in there, or two actually, that I believe everyone is longing for, and that is the word consistent and recurring. And I do believe that most of us have had some successes in terms of, yes, we booked some clients, we had a really great month, and that's what makes us proud. But if we look back at a year, it might not have been the best because it was like a one-off, right? So I cannot wait to talk to Gemma about what that is doing to us kind of emotionally because I know that mindset is a huge part of what you do too. And what can we then do in order to become that consistent, to get that consistent piece, which so many of us really long for. So welcome Gemma so much to the show. Thank you for having me. I'm delighted to be here. <laughs> so <laughs> you have so much experience and you've worked with so many people. Um, mm. And I think the first thing I want to ask you is when is the point or what is the main thing that you see for entrepreneurs who have started to you know, invest and to do their work? What is the main pitfall that you see when it comes to becoming consistent why is why does that seem to be such a difficult piece for people to grasp mm, it's a really really good one um and actually the reason that i've really focused on consistency is because it's been one of my biggest hang-ups as well mm. and so it's it, it's across the board and i think i think a lot of it comes down to or i think there's a few things at work but i think the main thing for me that i'm certainly seeing is self-doubt oh so really? people come up yeah so people come up with the the strategies and the action that they need to take and they've been advised by someone and then they get bombarded with all the different messages and all the other strategies and all the other ideas and they doubt themselves so they don't stay consistent and try one thing out for long enough to actually see the results and jump from idea to strategy to idea to strategy um, and then they just get overwhelmed with trying to do too many things, yeah. which then increases the self-doubt, becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. And I totally get that because I've been in that hamster wheel for a long time before it clicked and I actually took a seat back and allowed myself to take the time to implement for a few months and actually see what is going to happen. And you're totally right. I don't think that I realized at the time that it was soft out, but it probably was because I feel mm. what I see with clients all the time is this franticness. You know, you're desperate yeah. to make money. So you try and you try and you try and it's not working. And of course you start to feel stupid. I mean, why is this working mm. for everyone except for me? And indeed, it was because you didn't give it a chance. So in your experience, how do you coach someone or what advice would you give to someone in terms of how patient should they be with themselves to actually figure out, is this working or is this actually something that, no, I actually have to ask it. It's actually not worth yeah. developing. Yeah, yeah I, I try and get people taking action as quickly as possible because obviously there's another mindset trick that can start working when you decide on the action you're going to take or the strategy that you're going to follow and then perfectionism <laughs> might crop up and so you spend forever getting the thing ready that you're doing and I've seen people getting things ready for a year which for me is ridiculous because you're a business, you need to be earning money as quickly as possible. So for me, it's like, okay, how can we take the fastest action with this thing and test it? Yes. Um, because for me, it's all about testing and validation. You know, not everything is going to work. Not everything should work. And actually, you know, the lessons that you learn in those things that don't work normally 
send you in the direction of the things that are really right for you and your customer. So for me, it's like testing as soon as you can, getting those results in and then going again. I would never throw something out that didn't work the first time because I would look at what my approach was and is there anything that I can change there? And I would try it again and learn those lessons. And then if it didn't work, then maybe after that. But to be honest, I doubt that that would ever happen. I've never seen that happen um, because of the kind of the, the research and the work beforehand that you do and the lessons that you learn in the first go. But it's about just getting out there and committing to it and taking that consistent action every day and just getting it done. I agree. I agree. Step one is most definitely get out of prep zone. You don't have to be Mm. perfect at all, but people need to see something from you. I think step two, and I just had an interview with Hayley Dale, who is the founder of Your Content Empire. And it's, we really discussed how consistency in terms of content is absolutely key. And it might just be Mm. twice a month. And to have a plan, what are you actually focusing on with your content for that? every single month. But it's true that I personally, I think I'll give things, if I really want to test something out properly, I usually tell people it will take you around three months Mm. to really realize if something is working. Specifically, I think long-term content, it will just take time to gain traction, to have algorithms discover you, take you seriously, (laughs) present you to others. So I think that is that is a massive one. So yeah. how do you encourage people when they are saying, okay, actually my perfectionism, I am dying, but I'm ready to press the publish button. Okay, I can do this. Once they do that, how can they still get on this ladder of consistent leads, I would say, or consistent clients mm. inquiries, which is finally going to make them say, okay, I have more calls then I can take, or if I only convert at, let's say 10 or 15%, I'll still be fine. How, how do they make that happen? Yeah. I think that's about having a really clear system that you commit Mm. to. So what I tend to find, and I know you're the same, your, your um, system for marketing is very similar to mine. So you'll get this. Um, Most people, when they come to work with me, their marketing and the sales activity is really sporadic. Mm -hmm. And so they're doing a little bit over here, a little bit over here. Nothing is joined up. Nothing is streamlined. They're doing too much of the heavy lifting work. So actually it's a really cumbersome task that isn't getting enough results. For me, it's about streamlining that and finding the one thing in each of the key marketing and sales areas to really focus on. So for me, I have a marketing system, which I call my evergreen ecosystem across different platforms and pulling in leads from lots of different platforms into one place where they can be converted. So where is your traffic coming from? Is it through SEO? Is it through Pinterest? Is it through um, YouTube? And just focusing on one of those things and getting that right before you move to the other one. Then what are you doing with those leads? How are you converting them? Do you have a really relevant lead magnet that's taking them to email? And then how are you nurturing that relationship on email with a nurture sequence? And of course, all of that can be automated. All of that stuff. Yes. What is your lead content? Which is, which is like, yes, that's what we need, automation. What is your content? So I always um, recommend choosing a, your key content format. So I call it the lead content format, which could be text. It could be video, it could be audio, mm-hmm. whatever. And then repurposing that across lots of different formats to then feed it out to your different platforms and then picking one engagement platform to really focus on. So instead of trying to be on Instagram and LinkedIn and Facebook, choose one and do it really well and serve the others with your content. Exactly. Um, and then having that all set up as an automated system, just creates so many leads once you have it working and the key thing for me is yes you could have all of the different platforms in that system but when you start it's what we were talking about earlier focus one thing in each of those areas get that right and then add and and leave it for 90 days and then add something else in and grow it out from there so you know for me of course you can add facebook ads and google ads and things like that into the mix but starting out with an organic organic system like that um, 
can bring so many relevant leads into the business. I, and my, my organic system, because that's how I've been doing my business probably for the last six years. Um, and it, it's, it's get bringing in easily around 100 leads a month organically, most of them highly, highly relevant. Um, and it's all working in the background. All I do <laughs> is the content piece and then okay. going and engaging with people. That's it. I completely agree. And I, spe- I mean, especially with Sleep Like a Boss, I made the experience that ads can be very tricky as soon as you touch health yeah. or well-being or anything personal. Yeah. So it's never been worth it for me. And I haven't yeah. paid a single cent in two years, so to say, in ad spend. Not to say that I didn't pay for having other people implement my work for me in terms of yeah. you know sharing that content which is obviously also a budget, but very different, I feel, from an ad spend that you have to really invest quite a bit in in order to figure out what is actually working and what isn't. And might Mm. not be in your favor, depending on what you're selling. So there's one point that I want to touch on that kind of, yeah, that made me itch. (laughs) And that's because I'm not doing it enough. And I'm very clear about that. And that is looking at analytics. How important Mm. is it that you stay on track of your analytics it's something that is a little bit daunting to me and also maybe because I think I would actually have my assistant do it because I'm yeah terrible with checking in those things and putting them all in a spreadsheet although I totally do understand that it can be very helpful so is that a piece that you think is absolutely necessary or yeah I do because the thing is (laughs) everything is in the data sorry everything is in the data so the data is the only thing that can tell you whether this system that you've put in place is working and what you should do moving forward so imagine if you're spending all of this time on a platform that actually isn't producing any leads for you there is no engagement but you haven't checked that so you keep on flogging it and flogging it and flogging it and you're doing it for six months a year but actually that's not right for you you should go and use something else so it's Mm -hmm. the data that tells us that there is a lovely little tool that i must share with you that can automate this for you and it's a really nice dashboard it's called cyfe c-y-f-e dot com and you can create a whole stat dashboard it looks really nice really elegant and it pulls in the stats from different platforms. So you can get Google Analytics. It syncs with Active Campaign and shows me open rates and click through rates. It, you can sync it with YouTube, with Facebook, with wow. Instagram, with Pinterest. And you can pull all of your data into one dashboard and see it at a glance. My um, for blown. some things you might, I know it's so good. <laughs> like, for some yeah. things you might need to dig deeper. Um, you know, Google Analytics is scary as hell for most people, but so useful because that's where you can see which blog posts people are loving the most, which pages okay. people loving the most, what page people are leaving your website on. You're like, hang on a minute. That is not a natural leaving page. How am I getting people to leave? What is my content saying there? So all of those things should be driving everything that you're doing. And, you know, once you get over your fear of data, what it can tell you can drive everything in your business what you're selling how you're selling it the content you put out there everything that you're doing so i do advise just you know you don't have to measure everything i think we can get a little bit too obsessed with it but just kind of the key things on each of the different platforms so that you can understand yes that's working yes that's worth my time yes i can see the leads coming through from that so long as you can see all of those things, then that's all you need to kind of prove what, what you're doing is right. I agree. And one of the things is even at a certain point, you can just have someone to analyze it for you and just give you recommendations. That's what I have oh, with completely. my yeah. Instagram person. Yeah. She's just like, post at these times, these topics did really well. And then I just take her advice on board and that's how we pivot a little bit or customize our content for the following month. So it's not even you who has to do it necessarily. And I think I'm pretty sure you can yeah. find someone on Fiverr who's just a huge geek and likes to do it, you know, and just. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> no. yeah. So this is all what I think is totally logical. And one thing that I also love about this is that you have to be absolutely picking that one social media engagement platform, because I think you have Mm. the choice is really Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram right now is like the biggest Mm. one and LinkedIn. Um, LinkedIn, Another one that I just briefly want to touch on that people should check out, but not see as a social media engagement platform is Pinterest. Pinterest has proven to be 
uber gigantically, enormously successful for our business, but it's not a social media engagement platform. It's literally a search engine and it is so yeah. powerful. So for all of you who haven't listened to my episode with Jenna O, oh, listen to that. And um, it's, it's, I think you have to, I, if I had to choose all my platforms, I think Pinterest, I couldn't drop it. I did drop yeah. Twitter, I have to be honest, because it didn't do anything for me. I also think there's a difference in Europe and US probably. With yeah. Twitter. I think it's not quite the same response thing. Facebook, I dropped too, <laughs> I have to say. So, I mean, pick your battles, but it's important that you check out what it yeah. is. I love Pinterest. I do. I love it. And yeah. actually, I think it's really relevant for a health and wellness industry. It is. It really, really relevant. Really is. And it is fantastic. So you should, everyone should really definitely check it out. So once we have this, and I can vouch for this process working because I've seen it happen. I do believe that the more time you stick into it, the more it will come. I mean, you've mentioned that you've been doing this for six years. And I mean, I've been doing it consistently for two years. I've seen a massive change in my business. So be gentle with yourself. And that's the next point mm. I want to touch upon because you work with people who are at beginner level, but you also mm. work with people who have some serious clout. Like you have yes. say six, seven threshold figures, thresholds. And there's something interesting about that word consistency, isn't it? Because yeah. I really want to address this little mindset fuck up piece, so to say, where, you know, if we are not consistent for a month, it can really trip us up. So what are things that you see is happening that might make us want to give up? And what would be some maybe advice or some guidance that you could leave us with to help us not to fall into that funk and into that illusion because it is just an illusion. Yeah, completely. I think, um, I think with all of the different stories that we see online and all of the big claims of how quickly people made money and this launch did this and I had a tiny audience. I think people can be seduced so easily into thinking, oh, this must be easy. Um, and the thing is, you know, it can be for some people, but most of the time it takes time. But because people see these stories, they use that as a benchmark. So when they're showing up and then they don't get the same results, they start again to doubt and think they're going to throw in the towel. So they don't stay consistent. And this is exactly what you were saying at the start. They give in too quickly. Like you've got to give it 90 days or however long for it, for you to be able to see if it actually works. And so I see a lot of people kind of giving in on that. And, and also at the same time with that, that self doubt that I spoke about earlier comes in. So they think, okay, the strategy must be wrong. I'm getting it wrong. I'm going to quickly try something else. And so people kind of bombard their systems and their strategy with too many things and scattergun it, hoping that something will work, but actually nothing will because you're not actually committing to just one or two things and going all in on that and showing up every single day. I also think that, because of our mindset issues that are constantly being thrown up, mm -hmm. procrastinate, and there's a lot of resistance yeah. in the early days, later on, like at every level, there is resistance. Um, and I think it's so easy to have that resistance to be triggered and then fall into things like procrastination and think you're doing the business and think you're showing up, but actually you're busy with the busy work. You're yeah. just like faffing around in a Facebook group, I scrolling agree. Instagram and not actually taking business. And you can do that for seven hours a day yes. and finish your day saying, oh God, that was a busy day. And you've done nothing in your business and you haven't been consistent in the right areas. You've been consistent with your scrolling <laughs> and probably could get an award for it, but not consistent in the areas of business where you actually need it. So I think it's about really recognizing the important areas of business, the revenue generating areas of business. You know, for me, for people in the early days and later on, it doesn't matter. Yes. Like if it's not generating revenue, don't do it. Like, just do not do it because we're here to make money. 
We're not here to make friends. We're not here to have big communities. We're not here to do any of that stuff. We're here to make revenue because the revenue is the stuff that keeps us going. So even if we have a legacy led business, even if we're here to make impact, you have to make the revenue to be able to make the impact and it needs to drive everything words that need to be heard (laughs) like seriously because i do believe that a lot of people feel bad in air quotes right or real quotes whatever that they feel like they're selling out what if i only post to make money that it it's a feeling of grossness to them yeah so i really do believe that that is something that people get tripped up on and they're like no today Mm. i just have to contribute and you hear it all the time you need to give you need to give you need to give and it is true to some extent, but darling, you still <laughs> need to make money and keep your energy. Yeah. So I think sometimes it can be really difficult for people to differentiate between, as you say, busyism or consumerism, consuming new webinar techniques or blueprints yes. or whatever, and yes. you know, contributing in groups and posting and etc versus money leading strategies. So how can you help someone who's right now who feels like, okay, I think I might fall into that category. What kind of questions might they ask themselves or what kind of guidance could they use and could just be posted, you know, that they can have on their wall Mm. with just like a yes or no question to help them guide, to identify whether they are actually stuck in this, I really call it the consumption wheel or the hamster yeah. wheel of consumption and productivity versus productivity. But I really find it's a blind spot for people. Yeah. So how can, what can they use in order to shine a light on that blind spot to actually catch themselves and say, actually, I've been wasting a hell of a lot of time recently. Hmm. I think, yeah, absolutely. I think you, you need to go easy on yourself. Um, I think a lot of us self-flagellate far too much um, when we kind of do these things and fall into these traps. It's completely normal. It's procrastination and procrastination comes from fear and resistance. Mm -hmm. Um, But the thing for me is, and the way that I teach it is you need to be super clear, first of all, on your personal vision. Like what are you trying to achieve for you, your family, your life, others? What legacy do you want to leave? And then get clear on your business mission that's going to help you achieve that vision, right? So what is your business here for? Like, What do you want to achieve with that business and then once you have those two things like hooked in and they are in your soul and driving you then getting clear on your business goals that are going to help you achieve that mission and once you have your business goals and those business goals could be the business goals for this year they Mm -hmm. could be the business goals for the next six months the business goal for the next 90 days like whatever works for you but being really clear on what your goal is and then getting used to regularly asking yourself is this thing I'm doing right now moving me close to that goal? And if it isn't, stop. And the thing is, the things you can do, you can have a post-it note up. You can put reminders every hour on your phone, to an alarm to come through and say, is this moving you closer to your goals? <laughs> that is a really good check-in. Because if you're like sitting there and the alarm comes up and you're like, I'm scrolling Facebook. I know. Uh, I'm looking at beautiful cakes. This might not be <laughs> ideal. Right? I'm, I'm off on Pinterest looking at garden furniture. Like, you're going to be like, well, no, that's not moving me towards, towards the, the goal. And the thing is, when the goal is attached to something meaningful for you, your mm-hmm. mission and your vision, you are more likely to go, okay, I'm going to close that down because this is not helping me and then move on to something that you want to. The second thing I want to say there is be really smart with your time because dividing up your time, time blocking, theming days, all of these kind of things with your week can really help to create that consistency that you need and can remind you what you need to do at each point. I find a lot of business owners are kind of adrift with all Mm -hmm. of the ideas and they're like, oh, what am I doing then? And what am I doing then? By blocking out like every hour of my day, Monday to Friday, is blocked out in my calendar for specific tasks. Wednesdays and Thursdays, client calls. Mm -hmm. Mondays, admin, marketing. Tuesdays, I do a lot of kind of discovery calls and I have a big chunk of time for my 90-day goals so that that is in there and I can work on it. Fridays is a creativity day. So Mm -hmm. if I want to 
play around with something new, if I want to write some content, if I want to do my podcast. So I have that blocked out. That makes me see what I should be doing that day. So even if I veer off course, it kind of pulls me back to it. And then the final thing I want to say on that, this is something that I teach. All of these things are things I teach in Consistency Club, my membership. But this one specifically is the only thing. I teach it in here and I don't teach it anywhere else. It's about creating habits. Yes. Um, and we work, <laughs> we work in 30-day cycles in, um, in Consistency Club. And, that, and that's designed to be that way on purpose, to create habits off over each 30 days. So we map out our 30 days with... Um, five day sprints. We know exactly what we're doing in the core business areas on each of those days. So sales, marketing, operations, um, client delivery, and then I have self care in there as well, because that's really important. Um, we commit to what we're doing. But then the other thing that we do as part of that planning is we choose one thing, one behavior that we want to turn into a habit that month, month. So you become consistent in that one thing. And we then, uh, I call them the tiny tweaks that mm -hmm. you're going to make for the month. And we then attach that to an existing habit. So it follows after an existing thing. So for example, for me, um, I kept forgetting to drink enough water. Mm -hmm. during the day and it was a big thing for me and I was constantly by the afternoon really really dehydrated it was just not good for my health so I um I have a habit already that I shower in the morning get myself ready blow dry my hair and from blow drying my hair I always walk straight into the office that's it so my habit thing was once I dry my hair I will then go and fill up a two liter bottle first then take that in my office and then i'll celebrate doing that by playing some really re um, uh, relaxing music while i am planning my day um and you can do that for everything so that's more of a personal one you can do that for any kind of business thing checking your stats um you know it could be you have lunch on a monday then directly after that you check up check in on your numbers and you do all your spreadsheets, you put all your revenues and your expenses in that and you do one every 30 days and that creates the consistent habits. Um, so those three things will really help you. I really agree. And I've learned a couple of those through working with you in the, in the mastermind that way. And, and it's, I, it's something I never really considered. I also have to say that I was internally kind of reluctant to it because we tend to not do yeah. well with changing our habits. But yes. it is so important. So I do love these baby steps that you do. Yeah. And it's just, again, be gentle with yourself. You know, do your best, have a post-it, give yourself a treat when you do it, you know. But it is key and we mustn't forget that we are business owners. We are, I think every business owner is a leader because it takes courage. Mm. It takes vision. It takes grit, you know. So you have to really easily or with tiny steps just make sure that the whole environment is, is inviting for your growth, I guess. Mm -hmm. you know? So I love all of this. Now, the other thing that came out from the conversations that we had is that whoever's listening, whether you're at the beginning or also, and I really want to make this really clear, whether you've been in business for a few years, these behaviors are very common for every mm -hmm. level. And I think sometimes we don't talk about it enough. You know, sometimes we, yes. we do think this is just for beginners. And then we feel super ashamed if we've been in business for what, four, five, six years and mm. still struggle with it. And I just want you, you know, Gemma is one of the best people I know who creates space for you to be vulnerable in that way, you know, and just be, yeah. okay, it's totally fine. It's hard. <laughs> it really is hard right so i really think that that's a word that i also want to you know just leave with the audience mm. to just be kind with yourself no matter at what level you are and Completely. that leads me over to the last point i want to quickly talk about and that is that you have a quiz that is going I to do. help people at different levels so why don't you quickly walk us through that and how people can yeah. sign up although i'll have the link in the show notes as well Yes. So um, it's my online business assessment, actually. And I've just recently changed it because it is more of an assessment than, um, than a quiz. And it basically asks you questions about current performance in your business with no shame, no blame. It's just like, where are you at right now? 
Um, and from that, we can then determine what kind of stage of growth you're at in your business. And it will take you to a page that tells you, right, this is where you should be. This is what you should be focusing on. This is what you definitely shouldn't be focusing on. <laughs> and to just strip out all of that stuff, because I find a lot of people, they kind of try and surge forward and do things that they should do a little bit later on in the early days when you don't need to. It's Agreed. just the basics. So it just gives you a bit of a roadmap for what you should be doing now. And then as well as giving you that and all the advice that you need um, to really help you at the level you're at, and there are five different levels. There's brand newbie where it's just an idea, to start up, to established, to growth, and then to scale. So there are options for all of those. So you can fall into each of those categories. And then you also get a copy of my full roadmap that lists all of those different stages and what should be um, done in each of them. So you can actually see what is going on in the other stages and what you should be focusing on later on when you get to that stage. So it's um, my online business assessment and it's really, really useful and helps kind of just guide you in the right direction and strip out all the stuff that you should be doing. I love that because we do need that guidance. You know, we do need someone sometimes to tell us yes, no, <laughs> you know, and it's yeah. just much easier if you have someone else to give you the kick in the butt and just say like, okay, exactly this. for now this you know so Gemma thank you so much for sharing all of this with us because I believe every word had to be heard and I really believe that this has been super helpful so if you out there believe that if you learned one single thing that you thought this is going to make my life better this is going to make my business better then please go over head over to iTunes and leave us a five-star review. I would really appreciate it and it will help other people to find the podcast and learn from these incredible experts that we have over here. So thank you so, so much. And for the rest of you, I will talk to you again or see you again, depending on where we'll meet, whether you listen or read or watch. And um, I will see you in two weeks. So thank you, Gemma, so much for joining us. And all of you guys, if you want to check her out, you can do that at gemmawent.co.uk. And pretty much your handle is everywhere, is Gemma Went. So Gemma you, Went, will be yes. able, <laughs> you will be able to find her very easily and check her out and just see what she's doing because she is incredible. So thanks, everyone, and bye-bye for now.